Good morning and welcome to Cornerstone. Thank you for choosing to worship with us this morning. If you are here in person, please silence your cell phone and take your seat. For those online, let us know you're here by saying hello in the comments. And we invite everyone to check in on Facebook and Twitter and let your friends know that you're here worshiping with us this morning. Before we begin, here are a few prayer requests and announcements. Please keep the following in your prayers. The family and friends of Frank, who passed away on Thursday, October 7th. Lita, on the sudden death of her husband on Tuesday, October 5th. Judy and family, on the death of her 23-year-old grandson, who passed away unexpectedly in his sleep on Thursday, September 30th. Robin, who has health problems. Todd and Audrey ask for continued prayers for their son, Mitchell, who is fighting brain cancer. Karen Joe's nephew, Rick, is hospitalized in the ICU with COVID. Karen Joe's niece, Lisa, has a kidney infection. Karen Joe's brother-in-law, Steve, and sister are recovering from COVID. Dee Dee, who is having a test for cancer. And please remember everyone else who needs prayer that was not mentioned here this morning. As part of this year's generosity campaign, the 24-7 team will host a potluck supper at 5 p.m. on Saturday, October 23rd at Cornerstone. Entertainment will be provided by our own Alan Freeman, who will sing from a repertoire of standards and original gospel songs. Please RSVP by clicking on the link provided in the weekend update or going to the event on our website. For those without email or computer access, you may sign up on the bulletin board in the hallway across from the office. We look forward to seeing you. The United Methodist Men will present a trivia night on November 6th, 2021 at 6 p.m. Tickets are $15 per person with eight people to a table. There will be prizes for winners. Bring your own food. We will provide soda and coffee. All sales from tickets go to the Pavilion Fund. Please RSVP by clicking on the link provided in the weekend update or going to the event on our website. For those without email or computer access, you may sign up at the bulletin board at Sign Up Central across from the office. Cornerstone will offer carry-out Thanksgiving dinners on Sunday, November 21st. Dinners will include turkey, mashed potatoes, gravy, dressing, corn, green beans, roll, and dessert with a suggested donation of $5 per plate. In order to get an accurate count, we will require reservation by November 7th. Please RSVP by clicking on the link provided in the weekend update or going to the event on our website. For those without email or computer access, you may sign up at Sign Up Central across from the office. Dinners will be available for pickup on November 21st between services. The cooks could use some muscle on November 18th and 19th, so if you can help, please contact the office. Did you know that Cornerstone has a cemetery? Join us for Exploring Our Past Slash Past, 
a cemetery open house. More details coming soon. Would you like to give online but not sure how? Use our QR code. Open the camera or the QR code reader on your phone. Aim at the QR code and click on the link that pops up at the top of your screen. This will take you directly to our Give Online website page. It's quick and easy. We appreciate your generosity as we expand our online and in-person ministries at Cornerstone. Jesus teaches it is better to give than to receive. If you would like to give a morning offering today, we have a few options. You may download the Vanco Mobile Faith Engagement app through the App Store or Google Play Store by searching for Cornerstone United Methodist Church, O'Fallon, Missouri. You can also give through our website by clicking the Give Online tab, our Vanco Electronic Giving, Online Banking, In-Person Offering Box, or by sending your check to Cornerstone through the U.S. Postal Service. Thank you so much for your generosity. Well, hello, good morning, church family. Again, it's great to see everybody. Excited about worship. We're going to start up with a little upbeat song, get the blood flowing, get the worship going. So I invite you to stand as you're able, and let's lift up the Lord's name. So this next song is a Revelation song. It's one that most people here should probably know. So let's continue lifting our voices and give it up to God this morning.
goes on and we encounter any challenges or business, help us to keep you first above everything else. Give us the grace, the wisdom we need to serve you better, and all that we need to do to become closer to you, be more like your son, Jesus. We thank you for the songs that we just sang and the message we're about to hear, and most importantly, your son, Jesus Christ. It's in his name we pray all these things and all God's people say, amen. Go and have a seat. Stone. Pastor's got to turn on his microphone. Welcome to Cornerstone. Good morning, everyone. Testing to make sure. There we go. Hi, I'm Mike Gill, Pastor Cornerstone. People online are like, why do you keep saying this over and over again in the room? Everyone online, they can't hear me, but online you can hear me. So listen, I'm Mike Gill, Pastor at Cornerstone United Methodist Church. To those with us in the sanctuary and online, great to be with you in worship today. One of the things we're doing this month, the month of October, is we're focusing on the ways that Cornerstone is our light, uh, a light for us to experience Christ and a way for us to offer the light of Christ to others. 
And so each week this month, we're focusing on the ways that God generously shares with us the kind of grace that we can then share with others. Cornerstone is one of those churches that seeks to be involved in the lives of people from two to 102 and everywhere in between, and to get people together to be able to do ministry in Jesus' name. The generosity video that we have was put together by the 24-7 team that's leading us to celebrate the generous ministries of the church and the ways we can be part of that generous ministry and to, to reflect on where God is working through us to be the light for this world. So this video shows uh, some of the ministries and the ways we are the light of Christ. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Appreciate the video team and the 24 17 putting together that video, reminding us of the ways in the last couple of years we've been involved in uh, being the light for Jesus Christ for this world. And appreciate all of you who are supporting the ministries with your time, talents, and your, your financial gifts too. The scripture for this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew. In these words, we hear Jesus explain to us what our true purpose is in life. So get ready for a life changing couple of sentences. Hear these words of life meant for you and me today. Jesus says to us today, you are the light of the world. A, a town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. 
Well, this is a message series titled Your Light. The idea behind the message series is that we discover that our life is a light that reflects the love and grace of Jesus Christ in this world. And so each week this month, we're looking at the way our light is meant to be a light shared with the world. And our light is a way for us to connect to the work God wants us to do in this world, to a purpose that's greater than ourselves. Today, I want to talk about your light. We will be surprised by the daily ways God uses us to be a light for our world as we reflect Jesus Christ and what we say and do as we become a reflection of Christ's eternal light in the world around us. So, if Jesus is right, and I would surmise and suggest, I'm asserting that Jesus is right, you and I are light. So, when you think about this, and maybe you haven't thought about this before, you know, there are lots of ways we think about ourselves but have you thought, ever thought of yourself as a light fixture? What kind of light fixture best describes you? Are you a wall sconce? What does a wall sconce look like? There you go. You know, beautiful, decorative, yet at the same time kind of off to the side so you're not the center of attention, but crucial to offering light to a room. Maybe a wall sconce just does not capture the kind of personality you have. And some of you are really more like decorative pendant lights at the center of the room, grabbing attention. By the way, I don't have a crystal chandelier, but someone after the 9 o'clock service said, I know some people are crystal chandeliers. I said, wow, that seems like high maintenance. And they said, yes. <laughs> Maybe you're a... A, a decorative pendant light. Maybe some of you are these dusk to dawn outdoor lights. You're crucial to providing security. You provide light in crucial places, and you're dependable, always there, ready to go. So thank you to all of you dusk to dawn outdoor lights. We appreciate you so much. Now, in the middle of the night, I really appreciate all of you who are the hall night lights because there have been many times that I have avoided stubbing my toe thank to, thanks to you all. So really appreciate the work you're doing out there. Have you thought about yourself as a, as a light fixture before? We imagine ourselves in so many different ways. We draw metaphors in life that help us explain something about our function in life, right? Light fixtures. Could it be that one of the crucial ways you can understand yourself is to hear Jesus speak to you again and say, you are the light of the world, Jesus Christ says to you and me. This week, this past week, I've had a number of people come to me or just happen to off the cuff in just a, 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 a moment with me say that they don't think their life is that important, that they think life is passing them by, and they've missed opportunities to be important and to make important contributions in this world. I've been surprised that people who have lived good lives raised children, raised grandchildren, and then they get to a point and say, but did I do enough? Maybe for all of us, we have doubts about directions we've chosen, decisions we've made, opportunities we've missed. Today, Jesus Christ wants to speak to all of us and let each of us know that we have God-given purposes that are the, the source of the reason we've been born. And those purposes begin with, you and I are the light of the world, offering Christ's light to the world. So today, I want us to understand what it means for us to be light, the light of Christ, the light for this world. Light does many things. Light makes what is in the darkness visible. Have you ever been in a dark room? Maybe it's a, a hotel room, or maybe you're staying at someone's house and you're unfamiliar with the house, and you've gotten up in the middle of the night, there was no nightlight person to be there for you, and you, you bumped your knee into a sharp corner of an of a end table or bed or chair. There's nothing worse than being half awake or half asleep, to be in an unfamiliar place where it's really dark, and to find that really sweet spot in your kneecap that says you really are alive, 
and you really do not want to ever run into that corner of that whatever it is ever again because it hurts badly. There is something about light in a really dark room that transforms how we see life for the better. What does light do? It makes what is in darkness visible. What could it mean for you and me to be light? It can mean at times that we make for others a world that's now visible, that had been hidden before. Obstacles that could have been in someone else's way are now seen. And even we discover our path more clearly when we can understand what else is around us and who else is in our way. To be the light of the world means to bring to a world that at times is in darkness a visibility that's necessary to understand how we should be people, how we should live in this world, and what God can mean for us. Light helps us to see what is in the darkness. Light helps us to find our way. Have you ever driven out of a parking lot, driven down the road a ways, and there are street lights, and then you get to a spot where the street lights are gone, and you realize the reason people have been flashing their headlights at you is because you don't have your headlights on, and now you can't see anything because you've gone from an area that's had overhead street lights to it's just a dark uh, country road or it's a, a dark neighborhood, neighborhood without any lights on, and you realize you can't see without the headlights on. Light helps us to find our way. In the world Jesus lived in, there was no electricity, there were no street lights, no cars with headlights. And when people were traveling and it started to get dark and they looked for a place to stay for the night, they looked for those towns that were visible in the distance where the candlelight of the little homes that were there showed a way to safety and to a night's rest. Jesus says a town built on a hill cannot be hidden. To understand what it means for us to develop a faith that leads us to look beyond today and tomorrow, but all the way to eternity, to put our trust and hope in the cross of Jesus Christ, means for us to understand we have been created to be a town built on a hill that offers for others a lit way to purpose, to peace, to safety, to community and friendship, even to eternity. I think about what it would mean to be in Jesus' day traveling in a, a darkening town or a darkening street, seeing in the distance uh, a town built on a hill that would say, here is a place for you to stay and rest. And I think about how Cornerstone is a church that since 1807 has tried to be a, a, a light, a beacon of light for our community, offering for people different ways to, to receive the grace of God and to have their world transformed for the better. I think about ministries we have here, everything from worship to different kinds of small groups to ministries that reach out to the community in need. I think about this week seeing folks who are coming to the church to help with our Operation Backpack program that provides backpacks of food for kids who are in the greatest need in our immediate community working with different schools in our school district to offer help each weekend. I think about how in a way without us asking for anything in return, just as a, a town built on a hill doesn't ask for anything but shows the way we seek to do the same. We are meant to be a light for God that Christ works through. You know, when I think about light, light changes what we're able to do. Light changes what we're able to do. When my son was just two years old, my daughter wasn't yet born. My, my daughter's now a senior in high school. My son's in college. But when my son was just a couple of years old, my wife and son and I lived in Richmond, Virginia, and a hurricane came through the, the community. It was only a Category 1 hurricane by the time it got to us, so that's no big deal. Just a little wind and rain and a few hundred trees knocked over into houses. No big deal, really. You know, just a night of terror is all we had. 
And then the next day we realized the electricity was gone. And in the community of 100 homes we lived in, the, the, the uh, artesian well that provided water for us wouldn't work. And, and we were, because we were a smaller part of the overall electrical grid, we were, we were prioritized near the bottom of the list. So day one, day two, day eight before we got electricity back. Now, that would have been fine if I was a rugged, pioneering kind of guy from Kansas City, Missouri, but I'm a suburban Blue Springs boy, and I grew up with electricity and appreciate it. In any case, every night as it started to get to dusk and the light was fading in our living room, my son and I would would get down on the floor, our faces up against the, the, the carpeting, and we'd be right in front of the fireplace, and we'd play with his little Hot Wheels cars as the light started to fade away. I can remember seeing the shadows of the trees outside and the, the light disappearing a little bit, and, and my son and me having a little fun at the end of the day. Once the light was gone, it was bedtime for him, and really, there was not a lot left for us to do in the day, so it was bedtime for the whole family. When, when we got our electricity back, it was amazing how much longer we were staying up just because we were able to see what was around us. Light changes what we're able to do. Light helps us to understand how we can function better. It gives us opportunities we wouldn't have otherwise. Jesus says to us, Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. Jesus is talking about those times when the sun goes down and in order to continue to have activity, you have to find a way to make light, right? Candles, um, light the way. And change what you can do, giving you a chance to do more with the days you have. As the light of the world, those of us who say yes to God and follow Christ, embrace who we're meant to be, light for others that helps others to be able to see how to live and do more in this world, how to become the people they're meant to be. Light changes what we're able to do, and we as the people of light for God help others to see and change the way they see what they can do, how they can live in ways that truly embrace who they're created to be. Light's important for us. And understanding the, the imagery that Jesus is presenting to us today is meant to help us understand who we are and what we can be. See, I'm convinced this world is filled with people who are looking for a greater source of light for their life. There are people who are convinced they aren't that important, or they're spending so much time and energy being angry and frustrated and disillusioned with this world that they are missing opportunities to embrace the love and peace and joy and hope that's found in service to God each day. Jesus says these things to us to reveal that we are created by God to be sources of light. What is it you're meant to do in this world? You're meant to be a source of light to others that come to know you, that, that encounter you, that, that you become a part of their life too. And your light, the reflection of Jesus Christ in your life, is meant to change the way others see themselves and what they can do in this world and what God is placing in their life. Again, Jesus says, in the same way, let your light shine before others. What can it mean to be a light for others? It can, it can be this, that for others, they are looking for something, and you can be the one who points them in the direction of Christ by the way you live. In other words, in the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus is saying that our lives are meant to reflect who we put our trust in, what we do each day, the things we seek to accomplish, the way we envision who we are is meant to reflect 
the love and grace of God and the sacrifice and service of Jesus Christ and the ongoing work of the Holy Spirit to be with us. What can we accomplish each day? We can seek to be a light for others that helps them understand who they're meant to be. Faithfully imitating Christ and putting into practice the teachings of Christ opens others up to God's grace. So I've seen each week in the last few weeks so many people who act as if they are hopelessly lost, that they are confused, they doubt the importance of their life, they don't believe they have an impact in the world around them that makes a difference. I've seen many people who are very angry all the time, constantly frustrated with things going on around them, and they let life frustrate them. You know, I think life is way too short to live daily in anger and frustration. I don't see the attraction in it. And I'm convinced that so many people who are so filled with anger and hate are just simply missing that God is a love of God of love, God is a love of grace, is a God of love and grace who seeks to help us out each day. Faithfully imitating Christ, it reflects who we trust in. Jesus again says, in the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds. They may see your good deeds. There is this expectation that life, a life of faith will be practical, practically lived, affecting others in a positive way. The good we do in Jesus' name is meant to honor God, which fulfills our intended purposes in life and points people in the direction of God. That's what we're meant to do and be. Again, Jesus says, in the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. The effort we are meant to have each day is to be reflections of light for others, the reflection of Christ's light in our life that leads others to discover who God is for them and who they're meant to be. This week, we had a couple of significant tragedies in the church. Uh, one family, family of uh, lost a, a, a loved one who was not ill, suddenly died. Cornerstone has sought to comfort that family. Another significant member of the church, his name was Frank, been ill for a few weeks, had fallen and uh, been injured and, and died this past week. Just realized today that many people had not heard about Frank's passing. The reason Frank was so important to us is because he was a reflection of God's light every day. Whether it was just the way he talked kindly to people or the way he uh, played the harmonica, uh, he was a, a prince of a man who sought to reflect his love for God in the way he lived every day. The people that we have lost recently were people who were everyday people, and yet the eternal God worked through them. They were examples for all of us. So this week, you and I have a chance to do good in this world, to be light in this world. What do we do? First, my first suggestion is that we pray. In prayer, we ask God to help us in prayer, we ask God to help us to, to understand that we are light for this world. Just so you know, our sound in the sanctuary has disappeared, but I assure you, everybody online can hear us, hear me very well. So I'm going to act as if nothing's happened <laughs> except for all of you in the room. So I'm going to use my Little League coach's voice a bit and pretend like you're, oh, well, never mind. So this week we're going to be praying that the pastor can be heard for the next five minutes. The reason for prayer this week, my encouragement to you is this, that you discover that God's with you, that God affirms in you that you really matter, and that each activity in your day is a chance to reflect God's love and grace for someone else. And then take those prayers and live them out. Live every day as if you're a reflection of Christ's saving, guiding, life-changing truth, which you are. Seek to do good every day. Seek to do no harm. 
and make each day an opportunity to grow in love with God. If you do these things, you'll discover just how important your life is and how God is walking with you every day. Your light is a light that reflects the eternal life of Jesus Christ, and it affirms in you the importance that you play each day. My prayer for you is that you discover just how important you are to God and to others as you allow your light to shine in this world, as you embrace the purposes you have to offer to others hope and peace, joy and love that, that illumines their way too. So let's take time right now to pray, to talk to God about what, matter, what matters most to us and to make this the beginning of a week where we are focusing each day on living as people of prayer, as people of light, as imitators of Jesus Christ. Let's pray together. God, you lead us to you because of the light of your Son. And that light is meant to shine in us as well. Today, God, help us to understand that we matter to you and that we matter to others as well. That who we are can be the difference for someone that helps them to see their purpose in life, that changes their direction, that removes something that could otherwise cause them to stumble. God, today, shine on our hearts in a way that helps us to be the shining light on a hill that we are. Now, God, remind us of what it means to be your people. Teach us to pray as we remember your son's prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It's been great to be able to worship with you today. My prayer for you this week is that as you go out about your world, your life, and you're in this world, you discover that you've been blessed by God and that you can be a light that shines on others in a way that not only transforms how you see yourself, but changes others' lives too. Be blessed today. I thought I heard you all here. I felt something behind me happening. I heard you. I'm very excited about this. Amazing grace.